Hello, brothers and sisters. This is Kevin Cosby again with another powerful point to ponder as we unpack God's Word, spending meaningful moments with the Master here at St. Stephen Baptist Church in Louisville, Kentucky. Thank you for joining us. Well, we started our journey on Monday talking about refuse to be miserable based on the premise that we're just as happy as we want to be. We're just as miserable as we want to be. And I think the one word that I hope you will take away from this teaching for the entire week, week is the word refocus. Whatever gets your attention gets you. So once you are honest about what is making you miserable, then you, you release it. You recognize it. That's the first R word. Recognize it. Then once you recognize these are the things that are making me miserable, then in prayer you release them to God in faith. And then once you recognize and release, then you refocus. Because whatever gets your attention ultimately gets you. Refocusing is critically important. There's some people that maybe you need to leave alone. There's some people that you need to get out of your system. You, you, there's some circumstances you got to put behind you and say, oh, I ain't going there no more. I'm not going to invest a lot of emotional energy in things and people that have over the years proven to make me miserable. I release it to God and then I refocus. Success is not about hocus pocus. It's about focus, focus. You refocus on the things that you're supposed to be about. All right. Now, the opposite of refocus is resentment. You know, you, it's impossible to refocus if you are resentful. Just like a bee has to decide. The bee has to decide. Now, I have the potential of making honey and taking that honey and selling it for money. Or I can get mad and I can take my stinger and sting somebody. He, the bee can't do both because when the bee stings somebody, it lodges its abdomen in the victim and it commits a form of suicide. Or the bee can say, you know what, I'm going to fly above you and I'm going to join some other bees and I'm going to make honey. And just like that bee has that choice, you and I have that choice of whether or not we're going to make honey and sell that honey for money or if we're going to spend our time stinging someone. You cannot refocus on your honey if you're resentful towards people who are hurting you. Resentfulness is an unhealthy emotion, holding a grudge. You know, when somebody hurts you, they sent the hurt, what they did sent the hurt into your life the first time. Resentment, R-E, with the word sent means that that hurt that was initially sent by someone else is constantly being resent into your mind and into your life, not by the other person, but by you. You're the one that keeps resending resentment, resent. You resent it to yourself because you won't let it go and you won't refocus. And it's an unhealthy emotion. Holding a grudge is an unhealthy emotion. 1 Corinthians chapter 13 and verse 5 says this. 1 Corinthians 13 says, Love is not ill-mannered or selfish or irritable. Love does not keep a record of wrongs. Do you have a record book in which you just constantly chronicle all the things that people have done to you? The evil things they've done? Get rid of it. Because love does not keep a record of wrongs. Job chapter 5 and verse 2 says this. To worry yourself to death with resentment would be a foolish and sensible thing to do. Resentment, holding a grudge, holding on to a grudge, not letting it go. You know, you may have a period where you are holding, you've got that grudge, you're upset. But to hold on to it and not let it go. The Bible says resentment would be a foolish and senseless thing. Why is it a foolish and senseless thing to hold a grudge? Because resentments won't change the past. Be resentful won't change. Let me tell you what it won't do. It won't, the three P words, it won't change the past. What is in the past is still there and it won't change the past. Second P word, resentment won't solve the problem. 
So it's not being resentful won't solve the problem. And then finally, resentment won't hurt the person. So when you're resentful, it won't hurt the other person you're resentful against. Instead, it hurts you. It's like you drinking poison waiting for your enemy to get sick. When the fact of the matter is the person who hurt you has probably gone on with their life and not thinking about you because having a resentment is senseless, it's foolish, because it will not change the past, it will not fix the problem, and it will not hurt the person who hurt you. It, who hurt you. It only hurts you. Resentment is a cancer that hurts the container of the resentment. It's a cancer that mars the container. If you're the container, you got a resentment, it's marring you. The bottom line is you cannot get better if you get bitter. So resentment becomes a self-inflicted wound. And God doesn't want us to be resentful because that's looking in the past. God wants us to be refocused, which means we're spending all of our energy focused on the future. You only have so much emotional energy. And you don't want your emotional energy bifurcated or divided in the past and the future. For what God has for you, you're going to need all of your energies focused on that business. You're going to need all of your energy focused on that degree. You're going to need all of that energy, that emotional energy focused on trying to get yourself out of the hole that you've gotten yourself into. And you can get out of the hole, but you can't get out of the hole if you don't utilize all of your emotional energy. You can't be happy and rise above misery if you are the kind of person that is resentful and is holding on to a grudge. Colossians 3 verse 13 says this, get rid of all bitterness, get rid of it, passion and anger. No more shouting or insults. No more hateful feelings of any sort. Don't, don't hold on to it. It says let it go. Verse 32 says, instead be kind tender hearted to one another and forgive one another as God has forgiven you through Christ. What God has forgiven you, you forgive someone else. Forgiveness is not always for the other person. Forgiveness is for you so that you can move beyond resentment and move towards refocus because the best days that you have the rest of your days can be the best of your days if you get all into them and refocus. It's time, it's been time to move on for the rest of your life. And you can't move on for the rest of your life if you're holding on to something that's in the past of your life. God has something great for you, my brother. God has something great for you, my sister. Don't let the devil steal it from you by being miserable with resentment. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, thank you for your word. Bless your people today and help us to realize that uh, through refocusing and getting uh, our sense of direction towards those things that you have called us to do, that we don't have to be miserable anymore. I, Lord, I pray that your people who've been taught this week your word will begin on Monday to refocus. In fact, they'll begin right now on this Saturday to refocus in anticipation of starting a new day on Sunday. Bless your people. Thank you for another chance to get it right. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for being with us during this week of powerful points to ponder. And if you don't have a church home, we'd love to have you become a part of St. Stephen Church. Regardless of where you are in the world, just email us here at newstart at sscliveorlando.com.
www.ecchurch.org and become a digital disciple, a part of our e-church, regardless of who you are. Get involved. Get connected. Get involved with some other believers who can enrich your life. Maybe the way you, you, you refocus is you put some bad relationships behind you and you start connecting with the right kind of people that can, that can help you, the networks you're going to, cre you're going to create, uh, becoming a part of the church, the fellowship. Just con consider becoming a part of St. Stephen Church. Tomorrow is Sunday. It's the Lord's Day. And so a worship begins, the pre-worship experience begins at 9 o'clock, and then I've got a word we're in, in a series on the Lord's Prayer, Hallowed Be Thy Name. We talked about our Father last week, and this week we're going to talk about Hallowed Be Thy Name. Three things we're supposed to do when we pray the Lord's Prayer. Three things for God. We're supposed to hallow God's name. We're supposed to pray that His kingdom come, and we're supposed to pray that His will is going to be done. So you join us tomorrow uh, in uh, church worship tomorrow beginning at 9 o'clock and then I'll be ready and see you for the worship sermon, the sermon rather, during worship at 9.30. One last thing I'm going to share with you before I close and that is we have a new administration and next week's powerful points to ponder and I hope you will join us and get the word out. I'm going to talk about from the word of God, black liberation in a new administration. President Biden-elect Biden, Pres uh, Vice President-elect Kamala Harris. We've got a new administration. What does black liberation from the Word of God mean in a new administration? I'm going to talk about six things that should be agenda items for black Christians in light of Trump, in light of the, the things that are going on in our world, and you need to hear next week's powerful points to ponder. I've been praying about this, working on this, studying on this, analyzing this, and I think I've got something good to share with us next week. So you join us next week, and the theme will be black liberation in a new administration, all right? Because we have to keep doing black, uh, black liberation because black people are at the bottom. In every measurement from those who contract COVID-19 and those who are dying, the disproportionate number are black people. And when it comes to wealth in every area, all things bad, black people are at the top of the list, all things good, black people are at the bottom of the list. So we need some black liberation in the new administration and we didn't know what that looks like. So you join us starting next week for these powerful points to ponder. But until then, you know what our final salutation is. We do it every day, and it's important to do during COVID-19, and that is to stay safe. Put on your mask, social distance, stay safe, stay sane. Get this word of God. Ponder on these points, powerful points to ponder. And if you can, stay home. I'll see you in church tomorrow. God bless you.